I know what it's like. It's late at night. You're staring in front of the computer. You're thinking, ah, I should be doing something useful, but I'm kind of tired. I don't really have the energy to do anything useful. So I'll have a look at that and I'll have a look at that. And then when I'm really tired, oh, I'm just too tired. I can't do the thing I want to do. My name is Benjamin. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at study habits, routines, and mindset to make sure that the time you have for improving your English is well spent. You see, for me, I know that I'm most productive when I've got a good routine. So my, the first thing that I have to do, I'm not saying everyone has to have horses. I haven't had horses all my life and the, I don't, these don't even belong to me. But what I'm saying is it's good to have something outside and physical like to go outside first thing in the morning. So my, my morning routine, I come out, I come up here and, uh, you know, then I have to clear out their stable, take them outside because the, these two, they're, they're my responsibility. So, um, right, come on Zeus, come on Bailey, let's go out, we come. Out there go. You see, if I first thing try to sit down in front of the computer and start studying, my brain would be like a little fuzzy. It wouldn't be thinking very straight. I'm someone, I need the fresh air. I need, it, it just like clears my head after a night of sleep. And it's good to get some oxygen into the lungs, oxygen up to the brain, so that when I am ready to work, I go back down and I can think straight and that, I, you know, I'm focused, okay? And I know that I've got these two, they're taken care of, yeah? I can relax, that is done, okay? So let's get them out of the stables and then I can clear it out. Right, what are you up to? Oh, you go, go on. So by doing physical work, it helps us with a sense of, of well-being, okay? Um, now, I know a lot of people live in the city and getting outside, um, you know, you could sort of go and run around a park, you could like go to an outdoor gym or something. But if, if, our, if we're feeling good in our bodies, um, then our mind is more able to focus on what it is doing. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is sense of challenge and comfort zone. So I'm not really a horsey person, as you can probably tell, but um, recently a friend of ours who has just given birth, she's had a baby, she was running a, a riding stable, a place for horses where children went to have, have riding lessons. And because she was having the baby, she couldn't look after these uh, two ponies here. So she came to my wife and I and said, you know, no, you two have got children and you like uh, your boy riding. Do you think you could look after them? And we could have been like, no way. You know, we've got enough going on in our lives. We don't need that challenge. We've got a dog, we've got a cat, we've got, you know, two kids running a business, like all sorts of things going on. But it was like, yeah, okay, let's do this. Uh, challenge accepted. And when we take on challenges, that's when we grow. When we do things that are like slightly outside of our comfort zones, um, that's like the zone of growth. So uh, if you'd asked me like two months ago, if I thought I could walk two ponies round a wood on my own whilst carrying a baby on my back um no probably not but by having to do things you just do them so i think there's a danger in life of too much planning too much thought oh i'm only going to do that when i'm absolutely ready but if you have to do things 
because there's like no choice, then you're learning as you go along. So how does that relate to like English language learning? Well, if you go and live in an English speaking country, then you're hearing English the whole time and you're having to communicate in English um, for your your day to day life and perhaps your work. Um, I went to go and live in Spain and I didn't really know any Spanish. I had to learn Spanish. So think of ways in which you, instead of like, you know, being part of a Facebook group or watching something passively, like um, how can you actually apply what you know? How can you put it to the test? Because that is where you will grow. So I'm going to tell you a quick story now, which is about how to respond to life when life is a bit difficult. So there was once an old farmer and he had this donkey that was very, very old and it was costing him a lot of money to keep the donkey alive. He kept on having to go to the vet and the vet, you know what vets are like, they can be very expensive. So he decided he didn't, he didn't want to shoot the animal. So what he did is he, uh, he got it, he made it go down a well, you know, a circular structure with water down at the bottom. Okay. I don't know how he got it down there, but you know, donkey down in the well. But this donkey being a donkey that wouldn't give up, he got down at the bottom there. He was like, oh, here I am. It's not very nice, but you know, be okay. And um, one day they, well, some people in the village, they were throwing stuff down into the well. I think they were, they were like trying to bury the donkey or something. And the donkey saw this stuff coming down. It's like, oh, what's this? He stepped to the side, the stuff came down there. He saw more stuff and he, stepped to the side, gradually he worked out that he was going up and up and up and up until he got to the top and he was able to hop out again. And yes, he was old. Yes, he had a couple of uh, pains in his joints, but he survived. And the moral of that story is that you know, if life is being difficult and we have problems, you've got to try and step on top of them because that process of building and growing and adapting is what keeps us going. It keeps us alive. So one of my jobs is making sure they've got fresh water to drink when they're out here. There we are. Now, it's quite, you know, in life we can be, we can get all sort of wrapped up in ourselves. Um, you can be like, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, and you can kind of forget about other people. But if you, if you give and if you kind of care for others, like, uh, you know, I'm just looking after these horses now, but it gives me a, a warm, fuzzy glow inside. Um, because they're kind of my responsibility. I'm looking after them. And if we're thinking about like optimal mindset and like being in the really good zone so that we can learn and improve and progress, if we do spend a bit of time like each day or each week looking after others, whether that is visiting an elderly relative or like washing some plates in a homeless shelter or uh, you know, looking after some animals in a sort of rescue centre, walking someone's dog. It doesn't take us take long, but it can energise us to then go back and attack our work with like renewed energy.
Now, the next thing I want to talk about is more of a lifestyle thing. So a few months ago, I was, uh, I was teaching in a, you know, a very good school, um, but I wasn't particularly enjoying it. And I, I decided to get out of there and set up my own business. And I think we can get trapped in these situations for so long that you're not like really growing in, you're not really like fulfilled by, and you're kind of scared to break through and to, to break out of that like structure that is supporting you. And it, it can take uh, quite a lot of courage to, to quit something. You know, you're worried about what people are gonna think, but I'm not saying be reckless. I'm saying like you, you've got to think about decisions. But for me, getting out of something I didn't want to be in and starting to concentrate on running my own business, uh, it's allowed me to, you know, I wouldn't be able to be looking after these horses if I was commuting two hours a day and working six days a week and working really long hours. So sometimes when you let go of stuff that you don't really like, then new things can start flowing into your life. I appreciate that this video has been a little bit different. You're used to Benjamin standing in front of a whiteboard. What on earth is going on? But look, let's just review what I'm saying. If we want to be, come with me, if you want to be productive, if you want to make sure that the time spent learning, spent in front of a computer, is time well spent, then let's get outside. Let's get physical. And remember, you know, when we help others, we actually help ourselves, helps our sort of mental state. Naughty, naughty, naughty. Hey. Um, so that's it from me today. But thank you very much for watching. And until next time, get out there. Let's get busy. Let's get active. Let's get physical. Please remember to subscribe. If you want more help with your English, I help high-end professionals. Um, to write and speak better, visit honeyourenglish.com. Thanks guys, and ring that bell.